Hey, it's Dave the Butterfly Guy here. It's mid-July in Minnesota, and it's kind of halfway through the summer. I thought it'd be a great time to give you an update on how my butterfly garden's doing, the habitat I've created, and so let's get started. Maybe you remember the birch tree I planted for the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail a couple weeks ago. That's the host plant for the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. That's thriving, doing well. And then on this entrance to my garden, I've got some cone flowers. This is a hybrid that's red. I never see a lot of insects around it, but it's in bloom, it looks nice. And then I have two purple cone flowers that I've transplanted that are about ready to bloom. They'll bloom here over the next week or two. Hey, then on this side of my entryway to my garden, I've got a bunch of different flowers. I've got the black-eyed Susan in full bloom. I've got some yarrow that's in bloom. I've got a little bit of butterfly weed, a small one that's in bloom. And then back here, I've got some daisies that are in full bloom. So kind of the start of the blooming season for these flowers. All right, behind my daisies, I have a couple liatris. And the stems are out, but they're not quite ready to bloom. I feel like they're still two, two weeks, maybe three weeks away from blooming. But I love liatris, those are really great butterfly magnets. And then next to it, I've got a really cool plant. It's called catmint. And I've had a, a lot of blooming going on. It's almost done blooming. And I don't have a lot of insects around it now, but earlier I did. And the thing I love about catmint is critters like rabbits don't like the smell and don't eat at it. So it's been a really hardy plant. And then come back this way. I planted this last summer. It's a Heliopsis. I think it's in the sunflower family. And it gets tall and big and it's in bloom. And I've seen a lot of activity and butterflies around it. And so I'm pretty excited to have this added to my garden this year. So I've gone into my second entrance into the garden. I've got a bunch of yarrow that's growing here. Some more butterfly weed, one of my favorite host plants for the monarch. Some petunias, my cosmos I've got going here. I've already deadheaded those a couple of times and they've started to rebloom. I planted a couple of zinnias. And then if you come back here a couple weeks ago, I posted a video on the world milkweed. It's pretty small. I've got it right here. It's actually got a few aphids on here. I'm going to try to peel those off a little bit. So I've got the world milkweed. Again, it's a host plant for the monarch. I planted it about um, over a month ago, I think, and it's still not very big. I'm hoping it takes off soon. All right. Across the front here, I have a bunch of phlox plants. So I've got probably eight or nine phlox plants. You can see this one on the right, my right here has some purple flowers that are just starting to bloom. I'm super excited about the phlox blooming because those attract, especially they attract swallowtails. So I'm super excited about that. And then you might remember I created a little extra bed here in a small space, a little terrace. I've got some zinnias that are blooming. A couple of petunias that have already been eaten by rabbits that are regrowing. And I planted some verbania in this area, and that's also gone, eaten by rabbits. So I got to figure out how to get rid of the rabbit problem. Feel free to help me out if you have any advice. So let's move on deeper into the garden. So I said I had rabbit issues, so I've tried some rabbit spray hasn't worked all that great. I think the best way is to fence around it. Or in this case, I put a little golf basket over my pansy. It, all right, so I took a little bigger piece of screen, put it around my Joe Pied weed. I planted two this year. One of them's been devoured and is gone because of the rabbits, but this one I wanted to save. So it's already about a foot and a half going on two feet tall, starting to bloom. Joe Pied weed should get up to four feet tall tons of flowers and should be a great attractor to butterflies. Then my last fencing is down on this end of my garden. I've got uh, asters, New England asters, which bloom later in August and into September. They're a, kind of a late summer fall flower. Last year, again, tons of rabbit issues. I'm protecting them this year. I also have a little butterfly weed in there, which should be safe. 
Rabbits typically don't like those. And then over here on this end, I have, again, more butterfly weed and another New England aster, all caged up so the rabbits can't get to them. All right, on my third entrance into my garden, I've got it bookend with hyssop. And as you know, hyssop is my favorite flower to attract butterflies. Every bu uh, butterfly likes it. Monarchs, swallowtails, cloudless sulfurs, fritillaries. So I've got hyssop that's just starting to bloom. I've transplanted a couple more cone flowers. And then check out this really beautiful yarrow. It's hybrided and has some unique colors. It's a really pretty flower. I haven't seen tons of activity around it, but I've got it on both sides of my entryway here. And then in the middle, I have some Coreopsis. So again, that's in bloom. I need to probably deadhead that a little bit too right now. This is my swallowtail host plant area. So I've got rue for the black and giant swallowtail to host plant, parsley, some dill, and then look it up here. It's fennel, which is a host plant. Last year I had all kinds of caterpillars from the black swallowtail. Been destroyed by the rabbits. So again, I gotta figure out how to keep the rabbits out. So this is my bee balm. It's already bloomed. So through the month of June, it was a great plant. I've already deadheaded all the flowers off and hoping I'll get another bloom out of it, but uh, it continues to grow. It has rhizomes and grows each year, how much space it takes up. Great for June, not much the rest of the summer. So this is the main part of my garden. I started out with just two purple cone flowers, and now over the last four or five years, I've got over 20 purple cone flowers that from the seeds just expand year after year. The other thing that's really hardy here is some daisies, which again, I've just planted four or five years ago from seed and keep coming back year after year, so that's exciting. I've also got things like prairie cone flower in here. I've got some tickweed. I've got some yarrow. So again, this is kind of the big hardy part of my garden. Oh, and I also wanted to show you another little Leatra stand right here. So here's my milkweed, the common milkweed. I've had a bunch of monarch caterpillars on it already, but it's already bloomed and the blooms are done. So um, it's exciting when they bloom, but it doesn't last very long, just a couple of weeks. And now already the pods are starting to show up for the seeds. So in this area is where I planted my zinnias from seed. So I've got a bunch of them, bunch of them starting to grow. They're not very tall. Although I've got a couple back here by my milkweed that are already starting to bloom. So again, these big giant zinnias will get to maybe 24 to 30 inches tall. So tons of flowers, really a great flower. All right, so this is the part of the garden where I honor my Dutch heritage. I've got the windmill, the Dutch twins, kind of anchors my garden. So you've gotten a good look, mid-July halfway through the summer. A lot of things have already bloomed. Some things are now in bloom and some things still need to bloom later in the summer. So I'm excited to follow up with you in a month from now, give you a look in August and how things are going. So that's all I got for now. It's Dave the Butterfly Guy signing out and have a great day.